All right, guys, today is part three of the exothermic reaction series that I did with Jim McConnell from Light Elegance headquarters. If you guys haven't had a chance to watch parts one and two, please go back and watch them from the beginning. We started this whole entire collaborative series with a conversation about what is gel. Now we've gone into exothermic reactions, which is all about the heat that is created during the curing process. And a lot of you refer to it as the burn sensation when you put your hand in your nail lamp. So I hope by now you guys are you know, way more educated about like what exothermic reactions are. And we're gonna round out this part of the series with part three and close out our conversation about exothermic reactions. <laughs> Hi, this is Jim McConnell from Light Elegance Headquarters in Redmond, Oregon. Today we're talking about exothermic reactions, and I have with me our guest, Liz Morris. Hey guys. Liz is with the Nail Hub, and she is a fellow nerd. Yes, absolutely. So we are geeking out together today. <laughs> yes, and we are so excited to be doing this series because I know that the burn factor with gel that a lot of nail techs and clients have experienced is so important and it's a mystery to most people. And so we've been doing this amazing series talking about what that really is, exothermic reactions, which is the technical term. And we really encourage you to start the series from the beginning so you can catch up with where we are. But Jim is going to be showing us how basically we can mitigate this exothermic reaction through some other troubleshooting techniques regardless of the lamp that you have, regardless of the gel that you're using. And I think this can be really useful for some of you to understand some of the tools and tricks you can use to uh, handle heat with your gel. Really simply. Yeah. Very, very simple. So the key thing to keep in mind is just like with the sun, mm -hmm. the further we are away from the sun, the less heat we're going to experience. Yeah. And in this case here, our little LED dot is our sun. And the further the gel sample is away from the LED emitters inside the light, the less exothermic reaction we're going to experience with the gel cubes. Cool. Okay. So, pretty straight, straightforward and simple. I'm going to put this out in front of the light mm -hmm. rather than inside the light. In the last video, we actually tested the exothermic reaction inside the light. Today, on this video, we're going to test it outside the light. Yeah, and you're actually going to measure the temperature again this time as well, just to get that kind of that kind of visual on what kind of heat factor we're dealing with with that distance, physical distance from the LEDs. Yeah. So okay, what cool. we're going to do is we're going to put an exothermic, well, a thermocouple outside the light, we're going to put it inside the gel. Mm -hmm. And on this one, Liz, I think I'm going to take the other thermocouple and put it out in front. Right. It's like the sample's going to be out in front. Yeah. And we're going to put that right in the center. About It's about two inches away from the, from the, the front edge of the LED dot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we're going to put the thermocouple in. And if you wouldn't mind helping me. Sure. We're going to do full power mode. We're going to do full power mode, 60 seconds. Okay. That's 60. Yeah. And we're going to monitor the temperature here on the readout. Cool. So we're at half a degree difference wow. so far. So it's slow start. Absolutely sure. slow start. And, um, we're still less than a degree. Mm -hmm. So what we're experiencing is the further we are away from the LED emitters, the less intensity, the less emittance that the gel sample is going to see. And as a result, it's going to cure much more slowly. The slower it cures, the less heat they're going to cure. Absolutely. We can move it a little bit closer to the front of the light. And now we're at 2.4 degrees differential. So you wouldn't even notice that. Yeah, that's crazy. That's such a big difference from our last experiment where we were showing the gel inside the lamp with full power versus the buildup on power. I mean, this makes a huge difference just with having that physical distance from the light. Yeah, and it doesn't require any kind of special light. It doesn't require a different lamp. It doesn't require any kind of special tools. Yeah. Everything you have already, except for a little more knowledge. Yeah, absolutely. And you can control the amount of heat that your client experiences. Yes. And obviously we're using just a physical sample of gel on a nail form so that we can kind of demonstrate this and easily be able to put in this thermocoupler into the gel. But if this was your client, your client's hand with their nails with the gel on would be just in front of the light as well. So imagine this is the gel on your client's nails or even on your own nails and you're using that physical distance between the lamp and your hand to be able to control that polymerization. Right. Awesome. So in this case here, we have some of the gel is cured 
but it's not nearly 100% cured. Right. Right, because it didn't get the full exposure. Mm -hmm. So if we do that again and we start the light, but we can't pick this up, then we're going to insert it inside the light. Right. So it's not all the way in the back where the LEDs really are. It's going to be in the center of the light. And we're going to notice that our temperature is coming up. So now we're at 25 degrees. Right. So we're going from super low intensity to now mid intensity. And then if we were to put our hand fully into the light all the way to the full concentration of light, we'd be at high intensity. Right. So this is just a way to delay the amount of curing that takes place over a certain period of time. Very cool. And in this case, here, we're back, we're up to 38 degrees. Yeah, that's really, so that's a big difference from before. It's a big difference. Yeah. And I think this is such a powerful thing to know how to do and also to be able to explain to your clients because I know that when I explain exothermic reactions to my clientele, that they really feel that much more comfortable with the process. And when you teach them about the role that they can actually do in the service to help you as the nail technician, then they actually feel like they're part of the whole entire service and experience and that they have control over their experience as well. So teaching your clientele about how physical distance can really help if they just want to rest their hand in front of the lamp first before putting their, their hand you know, gradually into the light, that's going to help them feel less heat especially if you've got clients that are just really sensitive to gels. And, and I think that that's a really important thing for us to know as professionals so that we can you know, feel really confident about what we're doing and the fact that we are in control of the situation. Yeah. Yeah. So gradually inserting your hand into the light is one technique. Yeah. There's another good technique. There's a really other good technique and I'm actually a big fan of this one. So flash curing is something that I always do. It doesn't really matter what I'm working with. I really like to train my clients how to flash cure because creating that habit means that every time they come back for a service, they know exactly what they need to do when I put gel on their hand and they go to cure it. So flash curing is basically a process of taking your hand in and out of the lamp, or you can also have a situation where you're turning on and off the lamp. But honestly, when I'm applying on one hand and the other hand is being cured, it's very difficult for me to actually be in charge of turning on and off the lamp every single time. So I like to train my clients to physically flash cure, and that means they're going to be putting their hand inside the lamp for about a second if you're dealing with an LED lamp, and then taking it out for a good second or two as well. So they can continue to repeat that process the entire time that the light is actually on, whether it's 30 seconds or whatever. It's similar to keeping your hand outside towards the front of the lamp and using that physical distance. You're gonna slow down that curing, you're gonna slow down that exothermic reaction and that heat intensity and you're not gonna have as extreme of a feeling on your nails. Exactly. Yeah. And there are some lights that are on the market that do that for you. Mm -hmm. So you can select different flash curing yep. modes. Yep. And the light will works. blink on and off, right? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And also there's another one too that, you know, as a nail technician, one of the challenges if you're having to flash cure, you're having to use this physical distance is if you are working with a lot of gel, and I like to work with a lot of gel, I like, I'm a one and done type of girl, and I like to do one nail at a time. So once I get that perfect application, that perfect shape, I like people to go ahead and lock that in. And when you're using a lot of gel, one of the things that can also help, depending on how slow that polymerization is happening for a particular gel, is you can also have them put their hand in, take their hand out, and turn it upside down for a few seconds while they're, you know, kind of doing that pause then have them flip back over and put back in the lamp again. And the advantage of that is? The advantage is that gravity really helps keep that semi-cured or uncured gel in the center of the nail where you intend it to be, and you don't get kind of that flat effect or where the gel is kind of flat and then bulbous on the sides by the sidewalls. So if you're experiencing a gel that it really is curing very slowly, I do find that gravity helps me keep the gel where I want it to be while they're able to flash cure their nails. So just a couple alternatives for you guys to try physical distance, um, you know, flash cure modes. We can do, you know, the flash curing, training our clients how to flash cure their nails. Slowly insert. Slowly you insert. Know, hop into Absolutely. That. So there's a lot of actual things that you can work with your clientele. And I feel like nail clients actually respect you more as a professional when you're able to explain these things. I mean, you really do look like a serious service professional when you're able to do all of this. Science-based answers are important. Absolutely. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about real quick is one more factor that I think nail techs need to understand because even with all of these amazing tools and gel formulations and lamp technology, one of the things that can also add to heat experience is the health of your nail as well. So what would be a situation where you're going to feel, you know, intense heat regardless of some of these tools? I mean, 
does nail health really play a key, a key role in this? From, from my experience, it plays a huge role. Okay. If you have gel on your nail or acrylic on your nail and you rip it off, yeah. there's no gentle removal process, you've irritated the fingernail, you've thinned that fingernail down, and you've irritated the nail bed. Yeah. And as a result, you have a lot of blood flow to that injured area. And when you have all that blood flow and you have that thin down nail and you put that gel on, almost no matter what you do, you're gonna experience some heat, or yeah. your client's going to experience that heat. Yeah. So making sure that you have a good gentle removal is important. The other thing is, and we don't think about this, but in cold, cold environments, you can have, when the gel is really cold, it shrinks. And as it shrinks, it irritates that nail bed as well. And when it, that irritated nail bed is there, even if they come back in, a gentle warming process sometimes of the fingernail, a comfortable, a warming bowl or mitts. Yeah, that's a great idea. Can really help out quite a bit. Yeah, and that's absolutely something that people usually probably incorporate as a spa type of service, which is amazing and a great idea to get those hands warmed up before we start working on them. Yeah. You don't want that, those hands really hot because if it is hot, then what's going to happen with the gel? As I mentioned in the last video, the higher the initial temperature of the gel, the faster it's going to react. The faster it reacts, the more heat it's going to generate. Yeah, yeah, that's really good to know. Yeah. So I hope that helps you guys understand a little bit about exothermic reactions, what they really are. It's not a zing, a zap, or friction. Or a mystery. Or a mystery anymore. It's actually part of the gel curing process. And I feel like we've you know, really done a big deep dive on how people can understand this better, what's actually happening with their gels, and how they can really mitigate a lot of that heat and be in control of the situation. And at what point do you actually do damage to the finger? Absolutely. What are those danger zones and what yeah. to stay away from? Absolutely. So knowing that everything is going to be safe, just keep that temperature as low as you can. Using these techniques to mitigate that, that exothermic reaction, keeping the spikes to a minimum, yep. and enjoy your time with your client. Awesome. All right, well, thanks so much, guys. We're so excited. And I wanted to add that, you know, one of the great pleasures I get to enjoy as a professional nail technician is collaborating with people like Jim McConnell, people who are behind the products in our industry. It really excites me to get all of this knowledge. I feel like it's a course, you know, university course of data download every time I'm here with you. I just love it. And, uh, and I really encourage you, those of you that are already followers on my channel to you know, check out Jim's Chemist Corner. He does regular videos that go into the chemistry and the technology behind gel nail products and everything that Light Elegance does. It's really cool. And uh, I'm so excited to do more videos with you. This is just really fun. The pleasure and honor is mine because I have a ton of respect for this. Aww, and you. your Nail Hub videos that you do are phenomenal. Awesome. And the content is valuable. And it's not just brand specific. It is generally great knowledge. So, yeah, I think yeah. you and I yeah. both like to demystify things when it comes to nail products. Yeah. yeah. And if you follow me, but you don't follow the Nail Hub, you need to follow Liz. Yeah. So, at the Nail Hub. Yeah, at the Nail Hub and at Light Elegance HQ. So check us out. We've got more amazing videos to come. And uh, I hope, you know, like I said, this has been really helpful for all of you. We really want to help you have a better handle on what you're doing and uh, make sure you feel confident when you're out there in the chair. Perfect. Thank you.